Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Today on the 1961 Airstream Bambi series, I'm going to be prepping the trailer to install this Truma Kami Eco Plus. Eco Plus runs on LP gas and electricity. So you have to source both a propane line and a 110 volt AC outlet for it. I bought this kit on trumaheaters.com so they have their own warranty it's not covered under Truma's warranty or support uh, but today I'm going to show you I'm going to show you how to remove the kitchen remove the existing water heater and where to mark out the rough in for this Truma combi you can see in the box it comes with a lot of items touch panel control uh, I bought some extras with it, some extra fittings for duct work. This is the exhaust. This is some, uh, this ex expands out pretty long. Some duct work. You get the hot water and cold water lines. This is the pressure relief valve. And then you have the exhaust and the air intake. All in a very small compact configuration so you could put it in small trailers like the 1961 Bambi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the kitchen area. So I already pulled out the drawers. The refrigerator was already removed but I, I loosened all the screws and you can see in here the top of the existing water heater. So in this cavity here is where the trum is going to be. You can see part of the tank here. This this water heater tank is no longer good. The gas line was already capped off and uh, the tank itself leaks. And then after I pull out the kitchen I'm going to actually redo this cabinet and I decided to order a new countertop so I got black walnut countertop I'm going to be putting in here. Debating whether or not to keep the original sink. I do like the way it looks, but I just don't like the way it installs. And since I left you off last time, I freshened up the face of the Princess cooktop. And I decided I'm going to order a Novacool AC-DC compressor style refrigerator, the 3100 series, because it fits within the width and the height that I need. I will have to build a cabinet system. And then I have since then installed, fully installed the low point drains to drain down the fresh water tank and the front water lines. There'll be two more low point drains in the back. One for the Truma and one for the hot water line on that side of the trailer. This is where the low point drains come through the belly pan of the trailer and I'm going to cut them just so they stick down about an inch but this is where the water is going to drain out for the fresh water tank and the water lines and then this is the area where the Truma exhaust is going to come out right now this is where the current water heater exhaust comes out and this is where the air goes in and then this bottom panel removes so you can ignite it. And I already loosened the screw, so I'm just going to pull this off so you can see. See the hardware there? The screw just goes into that socket and turns a quarter turn. But this is where you would light the pilot. So you'd spin it over to pilot light, and then you would light the pilot right here, and then you turn it on your setting warm hot or normal and then there'd be flame that would go and heat up this element and then the exhaust is up top but what I have to do now is <clears throat> I'm going to remove this piece here and this piece to gain access to a water heater and you can see this shroud that they built to house this water heater uh, a lot of folks when they rehab the trailers they leave the shroud here and they just put a solid piece of aluminum across and then they put a modern water heater in its place. 
although a lot of people don't like the aesthetic look of this water heater, I, I do. I, I think it, it fits with the age of the trailer. So I'm going to try to use all these pieces even though they're non, not going to be functional. I'm going to put the aluminum panel inside here, but then I'm going to lay these over on top to keep that look the same. So what I have to do is remove some of these screws here to get this panel off. And these screws aren't too long. But I'm going to save them all because I'm going to reuse a lot of them. Okay. And then this panel should slip right down. Now you can see what you're left with, an exhaust here, which is most likely too rusted to slip off. So I'm going to cut that off. That way I can slide the water eater into the trailer to remove it. But this is what this is here for. This is functional. If any water got inside, it's tapered so it allows it to roll out instead of rolling inside. And then there is a seal here that's been compromised over the years that won't allow water to roll underneath. I already disconnected the gas line here and the one inside was already done. So let's go back in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the table, sorry, the countertop and the counter. So I had to drill out all the rivets for this piece here that holds this aluminum trim down. I'm going to save this and polish it up to see if I could utilize it again when I get the new countertop. Then what I did was I disconnected the hot and cold water lines behind the faucet and the drain assembly. So I could lift the countertop right off. Before I did that, I had to take a screw out here. And there's one, two, three, four screws up top. Now the countertop's loose. I also had to take a screw out here and here for the cooktop and lift the lid up and there's a gas line that ran from the back to a gas valve here. Now with that removed I can take the cooktop out of the way. See here it's all loose and ready to go. Lots of rust and debris in there. Now we can take this countertop off And just to rem remind you, I'm just mocking everything up at this point. Now that I have it off, you come and take a look and see what you have left. You have your drawer frames, which I'm going to salvage. You have thin little on board that goes into a channel in the wall. These are the blocks the countertop was screwed into. There is the hot water supply, the cold water supply I dropped down already. There's the drain assembly. And then this is the shelf that's been compromised of plumbing leaks throughout the year. It just collapsed. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it and use it as a template to cut a new one out. But I'm going to use a little bit thicker board. Now what I could do is remove this countertop section, I'm sorry, the cabinet section, and gain access to the water heater. Now you can see what's left. We have this compromised shelf assembly. It's kind of all floppy right now. And then we have the floor, which I poked around. There's no soft spots or no rot, but that will clean up really nice. And then the water heater itself bolts to the flange. I already removed three screws here and three screws on the other side. 
and then this cylinder now will come loose and pull away. But before I did that, I had to cut the plumbing line that was on this side that ran across, and then it hooked on here. And then I have to remove this pressure relief, which is held on by string. That screws through the floor. Okay. That just so brittle just fell apart. Then I removed the blocks that held this uh, clamp down. Remove this water line out of the way. Now I can take the tank and slide it backwards. Okay, and you can see the exhaust, I cut it. I didn't cut through all the way because I wanted to show you there's a nest in there. A little mouse nest. There's your gas line. There's the interior gas line all capped off. Okay, now the water heater's free. I carried it outside so you can see how big it is compared to the Truma system. But the Truma is both heat and hot water. And it's really designed for a trailer that's 20 foot or less, or a van in that size range. Which this trailer is 16 foot from ball to bumper and only 13 foot on the inside. The weight is about the same. This thing's heavy as anything, but so is the Truma. Now let me show you the void of where the water heater was. And you can see the outline of the cabinet. And I'm going to either utilize this gas line here or the gas line that was for the old refrigerator that uh, the new refrigerator is going to be 12 volt compressor or 110 electricity AC. So therefore I won't need that propane line. But when I put the Truma in I did some measurements and I'm going to have to cut this shroud and I'm going to keep it about an inch from the wall and then the Truma should fit right in here. Okay, using a reciprocating saw, some gloves and some safety glasses, I'm going to cut the shroud around but I'm going to make sure I'm not cutting through the floor, the sidewall, any plumbing, any electrical. So I'm going to keep the blade right about here. able to get majority of it cut with the reciprocating saw I was able to then start using snips to cut the rest of the metal out of the way just the areas that are doubled up was is a lot tougher to cut but I'm making sure I leave some type of lip here so if water does get in it will roll out so I was able to cut the shroud back tight enough against the wall but still leaving a strip at the bottom. Starting with the sawzall at the top and then working my right way to the bottom with the snips. Now I'm going to clean this area up and bring the Truma in and see how it fits. Carried the Truma in and rested it the way the manufacturer suggests installing it. So the part facing outside is the side with the ductwork on it. So there's four ports for duct work. And you can cap some off if you're not going to use them. There's an on off switch on the top but it does have a remote control that's going to go on the side of the cabinet right here. They want the exhaust port facing the side. The exhaust wraps around and goes outside. So this area right here is going to be cut out for the exhaust. There's going to be an electrical outlet installed 
back here in the trailer. It's going to be a dedicated 20 amp line. And then there's going to be 12 volt plumb to this area to hook the, the Truma up. And then there's uh, some access ports here for the 12 volt. On the bottom is the cold water inlet. And the top is where the hot water goes out. And there's going to be a pressure relief valve that I'm going to drill through the floor. This propane line I'm going to reroute to go right to the propane here. And it'll give me plenty of room, plenty of clearance that they do require. You can see the outline of the old cabinet. So the cabinet itself won't interfere. And I'll have access, if I ever need to work on anything, right by opening up the cabinet. And then I'm going to put a little vent on the bottom of the cabinet and plumb one of the heat ducts out here. One of the heat ducts is going to run around the back to heat the bathroom. And then the other heat ducts are going to run under the cabinet, underneath the wheel well, all the way to the front of the trailer will be a register. There will be one here, and there will be one behind the sofa. So those are the areas that I could use. I don't have to worry about height, because you can see it's lower than the, the shelf height. And it's going to fit in this area pretty well. Now to run through how the plumbing is going to connect, I'm going to have a cold water feed, whether it's city water or potable water by the 12 volt demand pump, come up to a low point drain. So this is going to be drilled through the bottom of the trailer. There's going to be T off the line that will allow me to drain the water heater down. That line will then continue <clears throat> and go through this uh, pressure reducer. And you got to make sure you follow the arrow. So I want it to go this way. And that's uh, going to be removable if I ever need the service. Then they have a backflow preventer as well. And then it's going to go to this 90 degree elbow. These things just clip on. And it's going to be just like this, but spaced out a little bit more with some half inch PEX tubing in between. So it's going to come from here, low point drains available if needed, T off, go this way, and up. And then before this, I'm going to have a T that's going to go up and feed the cold water side of the kitchen faucet. And then it's going to T off again and feed the toilet, which is buried behind all these drawers right now. And it's going to tee off, and then it's going to go to the shower hook up here. Then, where it comes out on the hot side, this is going to be drilled through the floor of the trailer, through the belly pan, to allow the pressure relief. And there's going to be a hot water line that's going to have a low point drain that goes through the floor here. It's going to tee off and go to another T that's going to feed the fresh water, I'm sorry, the kitchen galley faucet hot. Then it's going to continue. It's not going to go to the toilet. It's going to go around and then it's going to supply the hot water side of the shower. So that's going to be the plumbing. You followed me in the front when I did the fresh water tank that's underneath the lounge and I prepped it to a low point drain and a T that goes this way. So that's going to be where it all ties in, it goes around, up, across. On the exhaust side, which is the smaller tube and smaller tube in the middle, they want you to compress this down as tight as you could get. And there's a special clamp that comes with it. Uh, you want to make sure this one's longer than this one. When you compress it down, it allows the clamp to bite. And then you're going to clamp it onto here. Now see how I had to leave enough room for this cabinet to end? And then you're going to put the outer sleeve, and that has another clamp that's going to go on. And then it's going to be hooked up to an exhaust port that goes out that I'm going to drill through the existing water heater. So this is what the whole setup looks like. Now we're going to go outside and I'm going to take a look at what needs to be done to seal up and weather tight this outside compartment. Now back outside, I can see where 
the exhaust is going to line up. Now, when I had this original panel on, which I'm going to reuse, back here in the bottom corner is a little vent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this in its place. Hopefully it seals up nice and tight because I'm going to have a solid sheet of aluminum behind it. I'm going to use modern Airstream aluminum, so it's the Alcoa uh, aluminum with the clear coating on it, but it's going to be behind this panel anyway. Um, I'm also, once I finalize and install the, uh, the Truma permanently, I'm going to bolt it into the floor. So, what I need to do first is make a template. I'm going to use craft paper and I'm going to outline this, this edge here and cut it out and then I'll be able to cut out the piece of aluminum with shears and then I'll be able to screw it in place. But what I'm going to utilize is this little lip right here. I'm going to slip it up behind there because this top here is completely sealed. Taping the craft paper in place, I'm just going to trace the outside edge. making sure it's nice and firm. It's hard when the door in the trailer is open and the wind's blowing through. Blows the paper out. Okay, that's the top edge. Then I just gotta leave a little portion to slip under the lip there. Now I'm gonna cut this out and trace it onto uh, the modern style aluminum. edge of the aluminum here already has two nice square edges so all I have to do is make two more that's going to be my cut using shears and then heavy gloves I'm going to cut the aluminum There's an aluminum drip rail I just have to move out of the way. It's stapled in place, so you just gotta twist it. Now I'm gonna fit it into place. I rounded the bottom corners off so it fits the rounded part of the bottom. Slips over the top lip. lines up perfectly on the bottom. Now I'm going to use a foam gasket here because I want this to be not permanently riveted in place. I'm going to screw it in place so if I ever had to gain access I could just zip the screws off. Now I'm just going to clean the body of the trailer up really good where the foam adhesive is going to stick. Now if you wanted a more 
modern look, you could just simply rivet this panel in place, drill the hole for the Truma exhaust, and be done with it uh, do, using uh, Olympic style rivets and nice and sealed off. But I do want to be able to get in here if I ever needed to for service. Now I'm going to apply the foam gasket, leaving the seam all the way at the bottom. You can hear my uh, neighbor bickering. I could pull off the backing to the foam tape here and apply it to the trailer. Okay, top, bottom, and I could screw it off. So I'm just using these uh, flat sheet metal screws, really flat heads. I'm going to work from the corner and work my way to the middle, putting one every six inches or so. See how nice and tight it is. So you got this rain shield, we're overlapped here. Nice and tight all around the edge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the old pieces back up and see where I need to drill my three inch hole for the exhaust port. Okay, now that it's all fitted and lined up in place, I could put the screws in to Zip this into place. Okay. Now I can see when this is nice and secure how it's going to sit. The top piece is going to go right back in place right here, and those holes are going to line up. It's going to have that original look. But I'm going to drill a three inch hole right here. This outside hole is actually bigger than three inches. So I'm going to make sure the top is perfect and the bottom is just going to have this little gap. But it's going to be weather tight because of this back piece. My safety glass is on. What I'm first going to do is line up the drill. So the top corners meet the top of the drill bit. I'm going to go forward until the middle bit pierces through the back skin here. Alright, then what I'm going to do is run it in reverse just to score the surface here so it doesn't bite. Okay, once I've done that, now I'm going to take some oil to cool the blade down. There's our hole. So now what I could do is line up the Truma exhaust. This will go on just like this. It's this top. And I could screw that in and put the gasket on as soon as I clean all this up. So I installed all the rest of the screws to hold this original water heater exhaust on. Again, this might not be for everybody, but I wanted the original look on the outside. But now it has a Truma exhaust. Then I, what I did was took the Airstream 10X and sealed around the top. I left the bottom open because if any 
moisture could drip out and it won't roll into the body. Now I have to put on a little Truma cap here, the caution cap that says hot. And that is going to be the finished look. So now what we'll do is take a walk inside. I'll show you how I set up some of the plumbing. Inside using all the various hex fittings I bought separately, I came up with the design based on their installation manual. There's two versions. The bottom version has it set up for a bypass for winterization. And that's kind of what I did here. So let's review. Water comes in from the city water connection or the potable tank through the water pump. It goes through this water pressure regulator. Then it will supply water to the water heater, cold, and then it will come out hot. In line here, let me just move this out of the way, I have a backflow preventer and I have a low point drain which is on the cold water side right here. This will go down and through the floor and a fitting will be on it. Then I have a bypass valve built into it and I'll have another low point drain here for the hot water line. But in normal operation, cold water could come in and hot water could come out of the water heater and they can't mix because this one's shut and these are in line and they're open. But when I want to winterize and bypass the water heater, I would just close this, close this, and open the bypass. And that creates a loop around the plumbing inside the water heater but still allows it to drain right here. So I got a lot of work to do still, but now I have it all roughed in, the Pruma. I can do electrical and 12 volt. Before I do all that, I'm gonna start building a cabinet here. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it, and we'll see you soon.